Some years ago now, uh, probably two, three years ago, no, it would be more than two years, probably three, four years ago now, I read an article on tnation.com. Uh, uh, basically, it was about deadlifts and deadlifts for people that have really short arms. Now, I'm somebody that has a shorter arm span, uh, like wingspan, than my height. So I will be classified as somebody with short arms. Uh, so this guy basically went into a breakdown on how to uh, improve your deadlift if you're in this sort of category. Obviously, the best pullers in the world are going to be you know, uh, leveraged the right way, meaning they have long arms uh, and they can get, basically do a what I would consider a rack pull for myself. Um, just the positioning of the body at the start means a lot. Uh, so the more you kind of are horizontal with your spine to the floor uh, or parallel, the, the basically the more, I guess, behind the A-ball you are. Uh, we've all seen people with really long arms, deadlift, very, very impressive weight, and they don't look like they can do anything. But it's just the, way, the fact that they are doing a rack pull Maybe somebody like me or another person would classify as a rack pull. Uh, so I read this article and this guy, who's a very kind of well-known author, uh, started breaking it down. And one of the things that he was really kind of stressing was the fact that you're supposed to get really, really strong core because we are starting in a more hip flexed position. We're more bent over. It only makes sense. And so he went down the lines of, you know, uh, recommending what he thought was the best exercises, were the best exercises to hit that, you know, anterior uh, core, that abdomen region. And one of the things he recommended was these decline weighted, heavy weighted uh, sit-ups. So you will basically get a 20 pound or 20 kilo uh, plate if you can, put it on your chest and just wrap that out. So this is what I did today. It occurred to me today, this is how the brain works, man, like, you know, when you're kind of in this groove of thinking, you, you, you think about all these different angles of the, the problem that you have, the puzzle that you're trying to solve. And this thing popped into my head, this author from T-Nation a whole bunch of years ago, and he basically said decline sit-ups. Now, I didn't do decline sit-ups uh, today, and I also did not put the plate on my chest. Well, initially I tried, but it just seemed too heavy, and it just basically, you would have to hold a lot of weight in that position to have any resistance. So simply by putting the weight further away from the fulcrum, which is the pelvis, uh, in a sit-up, basically amplifies the force required. So simply just putting a, basically a, a five kilo weight behind your head felt heavier than a 20 kilo weight, kind of uh, me hugging that weight in, in that motion. So that's what I did today. Uh, last few days, as you guys know, uh, the guys have watched the video, the videos, I've been doing a lot of sit-ups, especially those early morning uh, 4 a.m. sessions where basically nothing else is happening. I'm not w woken up. I'm not feeling all that flashed. I basically did a whole bunch of sit-ups. Today, I've kind of come in and I felt good with the deadlift. I felt strong. Uh, however, the top end suffered. I tried to pull 260 today. It didn't work. On the replay, it seems like I had it, uh, but I just lost that lower back positioning and I was not prepared to fight and grind and lift with a compromised position. You guys know where I stand about this. There's nothing to be gained about hitting some arbitrary number in a training session. It's all about the force that your body is kind of dealing with. And if you, for whatever reason, give up a certain position that you like and you go into a secondary, a poorer position, a poorer posture, I think just quit it. It's a training session. It's not a competition uh, there's no point doing this, and that's what I did. I just dropped it, dropped 260, but it got me thinking. It got me thinking about these sit-ups. It got me thinking about what I'm doing uh, in terms of the latest kind of thought. You guys know we all started off my with, with that crazy squatting period where I was doing 5 by 5 and I seemingly was doing more weight every week. Got to 190 for 3 by 5 What... I think contributed mostly to that is the fact that my hips were feeling incredible. And what I was doing during that period was something called marching. Essentially, like a soldier, walking in, in, in the same spot with the knees kind of raised. So high knees, walking in the same spot. Now, I would do 100 of these because the, the, it's so light, right? You can walk forever, right? So I would do 100 of these with these high knees uh, as a warm-up, and I felt my hips were kind of insulated. I have a problem with anterior pelvic tilt. And so this kind of was unlocking my hips and I was uh, feeling more confident in the whole, throughout the whole squatting motion. 
that kind of led me down the pathway of, okay, what's really happening with these uh, marches? Uh, and so that kind of led me to thinking about basically hip flexion. I tried a whole bunch of other things. Uh, now I'm at that point of sit-ups and I'm trialing that. Today I lo- decided to load it and loading sit-ups is a whole lot easier than loading their marches. I've got ankle weights, but they go up to like five kilos or something. And after that, you can't strap anything to your shins. You can't strap anything to your foot. I don't have the monkey feet uh, attachment, that little thing that people talk about, knees over toes guy. I think he invented it. Maybe he didn't. I'm not sure. I don't have that. And even with that, having two of those with a dumbbell uh, strapped to you, it's hard to march. You would have to kind of do one leg at a time, which is fine. Anyway, I I went to the sit-ups last three days. Today, I really kind of pushed it. Uh, 240 went all right. 260, for whatever reason, my lower back, not that it gave out, I just wasn't feeling confident. And that's probably as a result of me basically doing sit-ups. Now, sit-ups hit the anterior core, right? We all know that. Uh, Sit-ups are hip flexion exercise. A lot of people are like, oh, you do sit-ups for your abs. Not directly. So what's happening in sit-ups is this. We are hip flexing. So technically speaking, our abs have nothing to do with that part of the motion. Hip flexors, rectus femoris, iliopsoas, maybe some TFL action. That's what causes your trunk to kind of go forward uh, when your feet are kind of stationary, a sit-up. The reason why some of us, especially me, and I'm sure a lot of you guys feel some doms in your abs is because the, as you are going through the range of motion of the sit-ups, uh, your body wants to go into anterior pelvic tilt. Why does it want to do that? Well, because the, the, the psoas, iliopsoas, originates in your spine. So T12 to L5. It's like a fan muscle. Each vertebra gets a piece of that psoas and it inserts into the proximal femur. So when those two points come together, you have trunk flexion or hip flexion. However, those points also want to draw the spine together. And so you have this kind of lumbar lordosis tendency to happen because where the muscle originates. What prevents you going into anterior pelvic tilt is the six-pack muscle, right? The abdominus. The abdominus, my rectus abdominus is what causes you to fight that force which wants you to stick your belly out. And so this is where you get your, I guess, isometric contraction in your abs. It's it's not a concentric, eccentric type. You're just holding that position, resisting that force which wants to have you go into that compromised lower back position where you are anterior pelvic tilted. I think this is why sit-ups have a bad name is because people do sit-ups incorrectly. You are supposed to have thoracic rounding essentially and you're supposed to have a posterior pelvic tilt to ensure your spine is safe. If you let that thing collapse and you just kind of let your shoulders go back the other way, you're going to be in a compromised position. You're going to put too, too much force, too much stress on those vertebra in the lumbar spine. I think it's a great movement. I mentioned in the last few days, Muhammad Ali and Tyson, one of the greatest boxers, some of the greatest boxers of all time, probably Muhammad Ali is the greatest. They used to do thousands. And whether they really did a thousand or whether they used to talk themselves up to scare the opponents or whatever, I'm not sure. But they used to do a lot of sit-ups. I don't really care how many. They did a lot. And so some of you guys are like, but it's not the greatest ab exercise out there. It's not the greatest core exercise. I hear you. There's a lot of sexy shit out there right now, hanging off the bar this way, that way, playing this way. Dead buck, raise your arm, blah, 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 all this stuff. My point is, if, my, if, it was, if sit-ups are good enough for Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, I reckon it's good enough for me too. Now, our goals might be different, but we want to both be explosive, the three of us, right? I can't believe I'm putting myself in the same damn senses as those guys. But that's my thinking. I don't want to train muscle. I want to train movements, patterns. I want to do something which is not hip extension. I want to do something, in fact, which is the opposite of hip extension, hip flexion. I want to train that. I think where a lot of this comes from is, oh, bodybuilders want to target the the six-pack muscle. They don't want to target the hip flexors. We want to train crunches. I don't want to crunch. I want to have strong hip flexors to stabilize the hip extensors when I'm squatting and deadlifting. So it was interesting to me 
uh, that I had that feeling at 260 of like, I'm not sure of this anymore. I feel I've gotten weaker. Uh, that tells me that I'm doing something that's affecting the primary movies in a deadlift and a squat. Uh, so when I was doing front squats today, I was actually supersetting sit-ups with front squats. Uh, and it kind of made me feel pretty good. It made me feel pretty good. I, I felt weaker, you know, because I'm super setting and I was, it was a pretty fast pace session today. It was an afternoon session, uh, full gym, you know, anyway, I, I got in and out of there basically within an hour. I, I tried to bench press. It didn't work. I wasn't really up for that. And I kind of left, but, um, yeah, uh, you know, the top end weight wasn't really good, uh, 240 and 140 deadlift and squat respectively. Uh, but I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm kind of entertaining this idea of strengthening the core. I'll tell you straight off the bat, man, uh, when it comes to core, I'm not very good. And yes, I know that's sounding crazy because I've got a 260 deadlift and a 210 squat. If you have those numbers, you can pretty much say that you have a pretty strong core. When I say I've got a weak core, I think relatively speaking to the rest of me, to the rest of the muscles that I, that I have, I think the core, the anterior core specifically, is weak. Uh, and I've got evidence for that. I think I've got an anterior pelvic tilt because of that. Uh, I think, somehow, that TFL or right hip pain that I used to experience wasn't helped by this ex excessive lumbar load doses. One of you guys actually mentioned something that has kind of been on my mind for quite a few years, um, and that's the... The, the diet side, the nutrition side affecting uh, your pelvis position. Uh, it was a really good point, and I, I definitely agree with that. I've thought about this in the past. If you eat something which is, is not agreeing with you, whatever the food might be, gluten, uh, whatever, 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 you pick it, dairy, whatever. Every, everyone might have some, something different that's, you know, that might be a little bit sensitive to. If you eat something that your body doesn't agree with, it gets inflamed. The GI tract gets inflamed. And so you might get bloated. That bloat, bloating feeling must have some sort of sensory inhibition to your muscles on the front of you. Okay. So then you have this bloating, which is a pressure of pushing out. And then you have this inhibition of the muscles associated, the transverse abdominis, the, the internal external obliques, and then you have the rectus abdominis. All this stuff kind of gets pushed out mechanically. And also maybe it gets uh, stimulated in an in a inhibit excuse me, in an inhibition kind of way and you get turned off from the central nervous system because you have this pressure. Um, you want to relieve this pressure so maybe the central nervous system kind of deregulates some of these anterior core muscles. And then you feel weak because you can't stabilize that, you know, that vulnerable, pos that, that vulnerable sp spinal segment of, of us, which is that lumbar spine, the, probably the weakest, maybe other than the neck, the weakest part of our spine or our structural integrity so it only makes sense if you were to pour concrete around that area internal external obliques trenvis abdominis rectus abdominis uh, all these muscles if you can kind of have that natural belt uh, and limit the amount of force you're leaking through that vulnerable spine segment then of course we can put more more pressure more force into that bar um, and effectively have more weight on the bar so these are the things that I'm thinking about. So uh, after I did all of this, I um, went over to that whatever section of the gym and I got a 10 kilo weight and I put it behind my head and I was doing this. This was killing me. I was fighting with all my might to prevent that anterior pelvic tilt. So my, my hip flexors are strong enough to get through this, but my, my rectus abdominis uh, was failing. And so I, I, I see the threatening of me kind of sticking my belly out, which is the whole, the whole point is to kind of stabilize that isometrically so these are the things on my mind right now um you know it's it's, it's a work in progress like anything uh but let's let's see how it pans out i, I think it's going to be good i'm actually suspecting a decrease in performance uh because i'm going to hammer this every day i'm going to hammer this every day uh and i'm going to see the effect the symptoms that i'm exhibiting um I've said this to you guys before. I'm not really fussed about, you know, the daily numbers that I'm experiencing. I just want to see how my body feels. And today, my body felt really well deadlifting, really well front squatting. I felt insulated. I felt strong. However, 
there was fatigue there. And so when I was loading up the kind of heavier weights, my body started to let go and, and whatever. That was, that was the, the, the result. But as long as I feel integrity through my movement, I know I'm on the right, right way. Uh, definitely, I think sit-ups, especially with weight, are much more taxing, have a much higher recovery requirement, recovery points requirement compared to just normal marching with no weight. Uh, but I'm just happy I can load this thing. I can load it. I can put, you know, I remember Mike Tyson was talking about a 25 pound plate. And he was doing like hundreds of these damn sit-ups. I don't know what, what position he had the, the 10 kilo weight. Um, but I'm guessing if you put it on your chest, it's not a lot of force, but putting it behind your head increases that kind of, uh, moment arm, I guess, from the, from the bottom of your spine, the, the pelvis and increases that force. Um, I even thought about not even getting the weight and just sticking my hands above my head. That's also going to elongate that moment arm and, and make it harder on the sit-ups. But anyway, that's in my head right now. Uh, it feels good. It, it always feels good when I do core under the bar. Uh, let's see how it pans out. I'm really, really interested to see this. I've got three names to mention in this video. Three more guys who have come on uh, onto the Patreon list. Nicholas Raish. Hopefully I said that correctly, man. Quinton Woods and Jared Nuku. Uh, thank you, fellas, for doing this. It's it's very much appreciated to have the support of so many people now. You guys have kind of added to the list. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. Um, I was talking to a fellow at the gym today, and you know he hasn't been around on the channel for a long time, and he said... He went into the comments and he was like, I haven't really seen a lot of channels like this where there's so much positivity. People are sharing ideas. People are offering help. There's, it's a community, he basically said. And uh, I'm blessed to have this, man. I'm blessed uh, to have you guys. I feel like if we all kind of work on these problems together and share some ideas, we only benefit each other, man. Like this is the thing. Everyone kind of gets better. And uh, this is what I'm most proud about is, is the community and the, the feeling of that. We're all kind of pushing in the same direction. That's a beautiful thing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.